Um, it's there it is. Okay, there it is. we got yes. it. Okay. okay, so if you all join me, I pledge okay. allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of, the United of the United States, States of America, America. Okay. to the republic, to the republic which, it stands, of which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice, justice for, all. For, all. for all. All right, super, thank you. Uh, agenda adjustments that I'm aware of that we're not going to need 6.9. Right. Okay, so we will not do 6.9. I don't think deleting one requires a motion and a vote. Are there any other agenda adjustments? I don't have any. And I have, I have none. So item 2.1, I'd entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the March 11, 2020 Board of Directors meeting. So moved. Second. Okay. Moved by Joan, second by Robbie. Any comments, discussions, corrections? So all votes have nope. to be done by roll call since we're not all in the same room. So Andy, if you will go down the roll call for approval of the motion. Yep, Bob. Yes. Uh, Joe? Yes. Robbie? Yes. Uh, Joan? Yes. Uh, Jen? Yes. Uh, Shelly? Yes. Stephanie? Yes. It's unanimous. And it passes. Thank you. Thank you. Petitions and communications? Uh, I have none tonight. So the only one that I would mention would be, and I think, Jen, you might have got the email, too, about a conference call on next Monday night or Monday afternoon sometime from the Department of Education. I don't think I got that. Did, okay. When did? Well, you're the vice chair, right? Or yes. Okay. So it was when addressed was it all sent? school board chairs and vice chairs. Okay. I think it came in maybe Monday. Uh, Could have been yesterday, but I think it was Monday. In my school board email, I don't have um, anything regarding a call. Okay. So I will forward it. I'll find it and forward it to you. Okay. If you want to join or not, it's up to you. They can only take 100 people. Okay. Uh, if they have more than that, then they'll they'll have a second one. But uh, And if we can make sure that DOE or the, I think this was Main School Management Association, actually. It was probably, yeah, it was probably MSBA. Yep. Yeah. Make sure that they have updated officers list. Yep. And I know after I wasn't chair for a while, I kept getting no yeah. to the chairs. I think Robbie's probably gets them or got them. Yeah. Okay. So I, um, they're just going to talk about the situation we're in and I guess just some feedback back and forth. So, um, what time's it up? I, I don't know offhand. Okay. I'll just wait for the email. Yeah. I think it's, well, you know, they don't do anything at night, right? That's out of hours. So probably right. three. Okay. Um, and I, I'd hate to interject, Bob, but I just uh, I just admitted Dory. Hi. Hi, Dory. Hi, Dory. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Welcome. Okay. Hello, hello. So for your information, Dory, um, we're on communications, petition communications, and I have mentioned that uh, all votes have to be taken by roll call. Okay. So when we have to vote on anything, Andy will go around and, and we'll have to uh, state yes or no on the motion. Okay. So reports, superintendent's report. Um, uh, as you guys know, um, it's been a um, interesting last couple of weeks. Um, I, I have spent significant amounts of hours as has Kathy on the phone with I can't even begin to list the number of people currently we are shut down until the end of uh, April April 27th is the date and, and I gotta say I, I, I gotta say Andy you gotta turn more towards towards Kathy a little bit more when you turn over the, to your shoulder to your right you mute out oh okay here we go okay thank is you that better that's yep. better 
Yeah. So I got to I got to thank Bob. Bob's been uh, been available every time I've called and and helped me process some of this stuff because it it it's been difficult. You know, one of the things that I didn't want to be was an island. Um, I did I wasn't prepared at the time to shut shut school down, um, but uh, we met as Western Maine superintendents, and I've, I've been pretty lucky. I actually sit in with the Western Maine superintendents and the Kennebec Valley superintendents. Um, they invite me uh, because we have school in, in Kennebec County and because of where I live, and I'm connected to that group. Um, and so, you know, one of the things that we've tried to do throughout this whole process is be consistent um, across those two regions. Um, and I act as kind of a go-between between between the two uh, because we border each other. And I think it, it, this process has been really difficult. And I, I will share, it's been a little frustrating at times um, because I feel like we are leading and we're not getting a lot of leadership out of Augusta. Um, but, but that is what it is. And we've had to make those decisions. So currently we're shut down through to April 27th. Um, we are providing, we'll talk about what we're doing a little later. Kathy can kind of fill you in on the educational stuff. Um, but I, I will say the commissioner came out yesterday on TV and said, chances are good we're going to be shut down uh, for school for the rest of the school year, um, which makes my heart hurt. Um, it, it's just, it's sad. Um, kids need school. Kids need connections. Families need kids to be in school. Um, I can tell you my home is tough right now. I've got, you know, Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays, I have four kids ages 13 and under home alone most days. It, it's just difficult. Um, right. So, you know, trying to, un, you know, trying to be cautious, trying to be careful, you know, being very sympathetic of what, what our families are going through right now. Um, I, I, one thing I will tell you is that our meal program has been a significant success. Um, day, day one, we served 1,100 meals. Day two, we served 1,300 meals. Yesterday, we served 1,900. Today. Wow, that's amazing. Wow, that's yep. awesome. We, I, I made a change um, to the way we were doing meal delivery, and, and we had had uh, 10, 10 or 11 static sites throughout the community. Um, I made a change to um, going to run the elementary bus runs. We got some, some pushback on that uh, from the community. And so I added today, we will have a static site out of central office. Uh, starting on Friday. So I'll be handing out meals on Friday here, um, which I'm looking forward to. I think that'll be a good way to connect with people. Um, you know, serving 1,900 meals tells you what food insecurity is like throughout this district. Um, and and I, we will continue that as long as we can. Um, you know, one of the things that we're struggling right now, and I'm being really upfront with, is supply. Um, you know, we, we were shorted on Monday for our order. We got our, uh, the rest of it this afternoon, so we're good right now. But uh, we do most, we're part of the capital buying group out of Augusta. So there are, I think, 22 or I can't remember the number of school systems that buy food products together so we save money. Um, we, we got involved in that last year. Um, and so we do our business with PFG, a good portion of it, and they notified us this week that their supplies, especially of commodities that, that the U.S. Um, ADA provides, uh, the Department of Agriculture, it's got to have so many, you know, it meets all the requirements for federal food service. They're running on short supply for commodities, and, and that's really because um, of what schools are doing right now. Uh, so it's just, it's, it's going to be a little difficult moving forward, but we will problem solve and overcome the best we can. Um, I'm getting really good feedback for the most part from the community about the things, the resources we're pushing out. Um, I get I get probably five emails a day at least. Uh, last night I got 22 uh, from from the community thanking us for for all that we're trying to do. So uh, overall, I think this has been pretty successful. You know, we're trying to be really cognizant of the fact that we need to provide education, but at the same token, we're also trying to provide education to homes that are struggling. So um, we're weighing all those out. Is that so, your report? That is my report. Any questions? Yeah, Andy, uh, I've heard nothing but good things about what we're doing is so far, and we're all in uncharted waters. Yep. But I think everybody realizes that. So I think 
you know, I, I, I think, you know, everybody realizes that everybody is doing the best they can. Yeah, and I, and I appreciate that. One of the things Kathy and I are going to be doing on Friday um, is we're going to be hosting a Zoom for the community. Um, if any of our parents want to Zoom in and talk to Kathy and I, ask questions, um, we're going to open ourselves up to do that just to kind of connect with the community a little bit more. Um, we're trying to put out information every day um, and, and the community has been really receptive to that. So we're going we're gonna to start doing that on the regular basis as well. Yeah, that's great. Are you going to post that like on the um, Facebook page or something with the link, just like yep. what you emailed to us? Okay, good. You got it. Good. You might, I might suggest that you also um, maybe want to send it to each of the towns and they can send it out to their email list of people because there will be people that might be interested, grandparents and, and sure. as sure. members of the community that don't go on our Facebook page and don't have students that they don't get email notifications. But they can just kind of send that out so that the, even if they don't have an opportunity to join, they're at least made aware that we're offering, we're being transparent and we're offering and uh, we're not trying to hide behind anything. Yep. No, I'll definitely do that. I've, tr I've tried to stay in pretty good contact, um, you know, with, with the towns. Um, you know, I left a message in Wales yesterday. I've talked to Sharon. Um, I've, I've called, I've talked to Tony a couple of times and I've talked to Trudy a couple of times, just basically reaching out to say, hey, do you guys need anything? What can we do? What do you guys have going on? That kind of stuff. So, yeah, I will definitely do that. I think that's a great idea. Okay, and moving on, no appointments, resignations, or retirements. Kathy, you want to give us a CAI report? Okay, I'm going to wait and do mine during the school closure piece later on. During, okay, very well. That's all uh, I Financial have. report, we didn't get a financial report this week. No. Nope. Uh, it, would, it would come the last, the last of the. No, you did. No, it was in the packet, Bob. Yeah, it was in the packet. It yeah. was. I just yeah. went through that all yesterday and read all those. Well, not yesterday. I went through and I saw the budgets. I didn't see the. Maybe I just kind of gloss. I just kind of glance at it. It's just kind of a bottom line. That's all right. Yeah. So we, if Scott is not with us tonight. He is not feeling well. I mean, it might uh, be, but he he wasn't feeling well last summer, and we don't think this is the same thing, but. You know, we all get a little cold or something now and then, and today uh, he just needed to get a little more rest. So uh, he's out with us tonight. Yeah, I sent him home this morning. So, all but right. if you have we'll questions about the finance, let me know. We'll keep our fingers crossed for Scott. Yep. Yeah, definitely. All right, so we'll go on. There's no other, no other reports um, unless somebody has an other report. It's not listed. Nope. Not at this time. So comments from the floor. So comments from the floor tonight is going to be a little bit different because of our situation. So we, we're going to have this comments from the floor period here. Then those who are not board members will be muted while we discuss the budget. And then following our board discussion of the budget, I will ask that we unmute the public so that if anybody has any comments or or items that they want to bring up and mention briefly, not full-fledged discussions and stuff like that, but if there's something that they're interested in having the board know about the budget, we can get that input at that time. And then we will, once that's done, we will uh, close the mics of the non-board members again. And then once we get down to uh, 6.8 and Kathy and whoever gives us our information about the uh, current, current school closure, and we're not talking about realignment of the school systems, but I think we're talking about our current situation and yes, closure yes, for the virus yes. reaction. Mm -hmm. Once that's done, we will open it up for public comments again in case any members of the public who may join us have something to go and say at that time. So with that understanding, I'll open it up now for comments from the floor. Comments from the floor. Sharon signals that she's fine. I'm good. All right. Good. In that case, we'll move on then. 6.1, new business. I guess I've got to read this because 
it's got to be the motion. So are we, hey, Bob, are we going to do old business first? What happened to old business? Oh, uh, yeah, I skipped right over that, didn't I? <laughs> yep. Yeah, I'm 5 sorry. 5.1, discussion of the budget. So um, I, first of all, I have to apologize for those of you that haven't seen my email. Um, I sent you some documents. Uh, they were not accurate. So as I was going back through this afternoon, checking some numbers, I realized that somewhere along the way, I had lost about $220,000 in that transfer from one budget document to the other. Um, I, I think I've got it figured out now. Um, so you, you need to disregard those. They are not accurate. Um, I apologize for that. I don't know if I, 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 the local additional, I mean, the, the 142,000, it wasn't in there in article 11 and there's another 80,000 I was trying to find. So anyway, so you guys had wanted to talk about what it looked like to add in, um, to add in one or two of those positions. Am I, I correct in that? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes, I did. I certainly did. All right, so let's start with adding one. Um, so if you add one of those positions to the budget, what that does is take the budget number to 19,751,217. So I, I just, if you give me one second, I've got a live spreadsheet going on here. Uh, Thank you. I just need to pump a number in here. So. Basically, if you add one of those positions in, um, and and that's at ninety thousand dollars. And granted, I, I'm using ninety thousand because ninety thousand is about what it costs with salary and benefits for a top of the scale teacher. So, so if you remember um, when I made my budget presentation, the original budget presentation, um, the impact that budget number was nineteen million six hundred and sixty ish thousand six sixty four I think. Um, the impact was one hundred fifty two thousand dollars increase to Litchfield, one hundred nineteen thousand two hundred eight dollars uh, to Sabatis, and seventy four thousand one hundred eight dollars to Wales. If you if you add in that position. Um, just that position to the 19,661, um, you're looking at 187,126 dollars for Litchfield, 157,566 dollars to Sabatis, and 88,273 to Wales. Um, you know that I, that is a substantial increase, um, but that that is the cost of one position. Yeah. Now, I, I would, need, I go ahead. Know. Okay, so what you need to know is we also got our health insurance cap. That doesn't mean that's what we got, but so what happens with the MEA Benefits Trust is they buy our insurance from Anthem for us, and then they have money, we pay them anyway. Long story short, they develop bands. And so they let us know at the end of last week that the cap of increase will be 6%. So that's good news for us. Um, I will tell you, I believe we'll be at the 6%. I mean, we're, we're actually spending more um, than we're paying it. We aren't, but they are spending more than we're paying in in premiums right now um, for health insurance for us. And so I believe we'll be at the 6%. So the numbers I'm giving you don't, don't include that, that percentage taking out taken out because we're currently at 10% in the budget. So just know there's some money that has to come out. And I've, I've said this before, I'll say it again, this document changes every day. Um, you know, if we get a resignation or things like that, it changes things. So, um, so there are still changes to come, but with the 10% in here, those are the numbers for one position. Does anybody have questions about that? No. Okay. The only, the only thing, Andy, that I noticed, um, and it's just because I was looking specifically at the different schools, um, particularly with uh, school counseling with each yep. one of them. Um, I know that there was a shift of uh, staffing going to the high school, so that yep. obviously increased it. But um, 
noticing, I think it was the, there was quite a significant increase at the middle school uh, when you look at the guidance budget. And yeah. I was just wondering if that was indicative of the second step program or there was something else that I think Ben had mentioned that he introduced as a program there. So I was just curious if that's what that increase was because I want to say it was like uh, close, it was at least 20000 if not $25,000. That That was probably a change in health insurance. Um, oh, okay. If, if, if there was that substantial of an increase somewhere specifically there, and I need to, let me get in here. Uh, let me find the middle school. Um, uh, sorry, bear with me here. Um, I'm looking at the one that has both the positions in it, and there was a difference um, from this year. It was 187,752. Uh, here we go. And uh, two twenty six. So it was a, it was a little more than a twenty five thousand dollar difference. Where where in the? Uh, oh no, I got to get up here. Two twenty six. You said. Okay, guidance services at the middle school twenty five thousand dollar. Yeah. Increase. Where where do you see that? It was. The amount for 2020 was 187.752, and then the the budgeted amount for 2021 is 162. Yeah, the 20, the twenty five thousand dollar decrease. Yeah. Yeah, that's a change in salary. Okay, because the change of personnel. Okay, right, that's, that's the what change. I thought. Yep, that's the change of personnel. Um, yep. So you know we hired significantly less in that yes. regard. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions about that? I have a question. Um, could you clear this up? You said ninety thousand into the budget, right? Yep. If we leave, if we leave now, where would would that be targeted for any particular position or just well, put in for the? So that was that was either the um, that was either the instructional coach for six twelve or the the uh, pre-K-12 behavior interventionist. Interventionist, yep. right. Yeah. But we can't have both. Well, we I can give you the numbers for both. Would you like me to give you those? Yeah. Sure, why not? Okay. Why not? So if you add another 90000 to the budget, that brings your budget number to 19841217 Okay, so let me just get back in okay. here to this spreadsheet. And 19,841,217. Okay, so that, that will take um, the impact. That adds, so, so we were at the original budget around 150 uh, for Litchfield. We're now at, so with both of those positions in, Okay, 19,841,217. It represents an increase to each town of Litchfield, $222,710. Sabatis, $197,307. And Wales, $102,949. Now, yet again, I go back to there will be some money coming out for for the health insurance. The other thing is we have not completed negotiations yet. So there's there's that piece as well. Andy, is there a way that you can tell us what the impact is over your original budget? And yeah. Just, you know, like 40,000 per town or something like that? Yep, I can. Let me get back in here. I gotta go to a different screen. Right. Instead of the instead of just reading the large number. Yep. Gotcha. I'm just gonna make some notes here. One one nine two zero eight. Wales seventy four one zero eight. Okay. So if you change over the original proposed budget, so of the two positions, so with the two positions in here for the town of Litchfield, 
seven one zero minus one five two seven five one. So Litchfield, that would over the the budget that I presented the first time, that would be an increase for Litchfield over that one of sixty nine thousand nine hundred and fifty nine dollars. Okay. For Sabatis. Zero seven minus. Sorry, I'm talking to myself. I apologize. That's okay. Yeah, for Sabatis, it's seventy-eight thousand um, o ninety-nine, and uh, for Wales, um, one o two nine forty-nine minus seventy-four thousand one o five. Uh, twenty-eight thousand eight hundred and forty-four. All right. I just think those are a little bit easier numbers to understand and yeah, yeah. Uh, I agree. You know what I mean? You at, at least we see what the impact is a little bit easier. Absolutely, and I can I can put this all on paper to send out to um, yep. just so you can yep. see it. You know, uh, the reality yeah. here is that's a big budget. Um, yes. It just is. I do do I think we need those positions? 100%, I think we need those positions. Yeah. However, that's a big budget. Um, so that is. the other thing I think we need to keep in mind here is that um, I, I don't know what the budget process is gonna look like. So I had a conversation right. yeah. with, with Tom Trenholm uh, this morning actually about the budget process because the, so the reality here is this, we can't get a budget passed until we can have a district budget meeting. And we can't have a district budget meeting until we're through this whole um, COVID-19 um, thing. Mm -hmm. So the reality here is that Scott and I are also trying to plan on the law. The law says that you, know, you can revert back to the last budget approved at the district budget meeting. So the last budget that was approved at a district budget meeting is the budget we're currently working under. And so there is a potential we will have to start July 1 working under the FY20 budget. Um, that, that poses some problems for us uh, because there are some things built in there. So Scott and I are going to start working on how we're going to manage that until we can have a budget. So I I don't know what else you want to see or hear. I was just wondering about a percentage. A percentage to each town? No, not for each town. The impact on the overall budget. Um. Yep. So if you go to, let me just do the numbers out here. If you go. Nineteen million eight forty one um, two one seven and uh, let's see if you get back into another screen nineteen six six four oh wait a minute nope I'm in the wrong budget so nineteen million eight forty one two one seven minus 19133325 so so that with the two positions in it's seven it's a seven hundred and seven thousand eight hundred and ninety two dollar increase over the current fy20 budget or okay. um, percentage wise uh, it's about three point six percent okay or 3.7 if you round up. Right. All right. That's, that's and, getting and, a little steep. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little high. Um, the, the reality here is that, and the other thing is the governor's supplemental budget passed. So the money that was we told we were going to get through the ED-279, that's the money we're going to get. There, there will be no more money coming. So... We did, we did receive word. Scott and I put in for an adjustment uh, based, uh, based upon our, our superintendent's agreements. 
And we are going to see a little bump there. We, we're still not sure how that's going to work. We're actually going to see it in this budget year. Um, Scott has reached out to the department to say, how is that coming to us? It's about 30000 So that actually will help our revenue this year. But we don't know what that will look like for next year. Right. Okay. That's right. It's all an unknown. Yep, it is. And, and again, there's some money that's got to come out of here, and we're still in negotiations. Yep. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So I guess the <clears throat> doesn't seem to be a real rush nope. because everything is delayed and getting this done and gives time to think about it. But so right now we're looking at without the adjustment for health insurance, adding the two positions, um, no negotiated uh, increases in any of the salaries, salary lines, that it would be approximately 3.6% increase. In the overall, that's in the overall budget. Right. What is the percentage increase in local allocation? Sure. So that's so, what people don't care how much the state's paying. They right. Know how well, much so so the increase, the variance uh, from FY twenty to what I just gave you, the nineteen million eight forty one, would be six percent, six point oh seven percent to Litchfield. 5.98% to Sabatis and 8.42% to Wales. All right, so we're looking at the local shares going up 6 to 8%. Oh, yes. Yep. Not 3.6 like the budget says. You got it. So that's 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 the number that we have to be able to support. And I hate using the word sell to the public, but we got to get them to agree with those numbers uh, yes. and how it's going to impact their property taxes mm -hmm. so that's kind of a key we can you know we can we've run into this before where we've had little or no increase in the overall budget but we've had increases right. in what the towns pay you know, yep. and we had to worry about what the towns are paying as is the real number that people look at right yes and they're going to um, look at that even harder this time around particularly if they are out of work right and, and we're hoping that well by the time we can get to a budget meeting that people will be back to work as long as yeah, their business well. has been able to survive that hires them so i don't know um I guess we it's food for thought. We have to think about it because we're not approving the budget next week in two weeks or in four weeks, probably. Mm -hmm. But it is really something. Is that an, a percentage? And knowing that there may be some additional costs based upon salary negotiated. Yep. And there yep. might be, and it will be some savings on health insurance, but. I think if we get six percent over the ten, I think that was like thirty thousand dollars, roughly. Uh, that, yeah, roughly to be saved. So, um, it's not a one to one. Yeah. So it's you know it's <laughs> it's you know got to be careful. So that's that's really where I think we have to focus and consider when we get down to really pulling this budget. What is it? that we think the local communities will accept for the increase in their local share in their property tax bills. Uh, and are, do these numbers, will these numbers be agreeable to the communities? It's hard, I think it's gonna be a, a tough sell, even in, yeah. if we didn't have this, even if it was a year ago, to sell a six to 8% increase depending on your town. In their in their local uh, school budget, so you're right, Bob. So it would I think it will be a very difficult sell. Right, and even with just the one position, yep. So you're talking ninety instead of one hundred and eighty thousand increase. Yep. You're still yep. you're still talking probably five to seven percent. Yeah, I think it was like high fours to low sevens. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, even without either position, that's a uh, 
significant increase to the local shares. Um, yes. And while some of that is driven by the state's requirement for local share, since we exceed the formula, um, we get an extra an extra allocation on top of it. <laughs> so if there's if there's other discussion on the budget from the board, let's have it, and then we'll open it up for any public comment for anybody who's listening and has comments to go and make on it. Um, think about it because we're going to have to get asked in the future how we want to proceed with budget presentations. If, like I said, I don't think that there is a rush right now to settle on one or two of the positions or none of them. But we have information which will help us make that decision when it comes time. Could we go over the two positions again? The behavior interventionist, what was the first position? It was a um, grade six through 12 instructional coach. Okay. Do you want to, Dora, do you want to hear more about what those do? Um, I, I've heard that the pre-K through five, that that has helped that grade set a lot. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. you wanted the six through 12 because you thought that that could help them in their skill set as well. Well, it's really, yeah, it's really about job embedded professional development. You know, the reality is we've been doing curriculum and assessment. You know, we, we're good at that. Um, and we're real good at instruction, but we're always operating under a continuous improvement model. And I just look at how, how, how amazing our instruction, we've always had good instruction, but, but our teachers, you know, they're accessing the instructional coach to improve their own instruction. And I think that they, they want to improve their own practice. And so to have someone that isn't an evaluator, um, it's a non-threatening and, you know, in their minds come in and work with them as a peer to work on their instructional practices it's huge and do it on the spot you know they're in their classrooms they teach alongside of them then they then they work together to develop plans um, it's just it it's really shifting shifting how we do professional development i can see that i can see how that would work well any other questions? I, I just find it ironic because given this time, um, I'm guessing that many parents are very appreciative, even more so, of just what our schools do for their children. And um, it's ironic, you know, that many of them don't have uh, income at this time because I'm pretty sure in a perfect world, they would want both of those positions. But the reality is, is when your pocketbook doesn't support that, then you've got to make those hard decisions. But, you know, it, it's just a sad irony at this time, I guess. Well, it's it honestly, Jen, it's a tough time to talk about budgets just because of the uncertainty in society right now. Uh, absolutely. It just is. Absolutely. All right. So. If there's nothing else, then we'll open it up in case our public wants to make any comments. And then if there are none or after we deal with those comments, then we will go on into new business. All right. This is anybody, non board member person listening in would like to make any comments about the budget or have any questions or comments about it. I'm hearing none. So in that case, we will close this public comment period and we will move on to new business. Okay. Okay. All right. 6.1. Entertain a motion that the vote entitled voters, votes, excuse me, votes concerning mandatory 403B planned amendments be approved in form presented to this meeting and that the secretary file an attested copy of said vote with the minutes of this meeting. That plan amendments is 
Whereas the regional school unit number four, the school unit or plan sponsor, adopted a 403B plan and the 403B plan effective 31 December 2009 to allow eligible employees of the school unit to contribute salary pre-tax to save for retirement. Whereas the 403B plan permits eligible employees to seek hardship distribution from the plan for certain qualifying financial hardships. Whereas the Bipartisan Budget Act of 2018 requires certain amendments to be made to 403B plans that provide for hardship distributions and the HEROES Earnings Assistance and Relief Tax Act requires certain amendments to be made to 403B plans to protect retirement benefits for certain employees called into active duty. Whereas the school unit legal counsel has prepared the attached 403B plan amendment, the plan amendment, that incorporates these required amendments and recommends that the school unit adopt the plan, the attached plan amendment. Now, therefore, the school board of the school unit hereby votes to authorize the adoption of the planned amendment as follows. It is attached. May I have a second? Uh, so moved. Second. Second. Who was, who moved, who was the first? Joan moved hey, it. Joan. Okay. Okay. Robbie so, was the second? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the planned amendment we don't have. It was attached. Yeah, it was. Something else I missed. I have to figure what's going on. Is, is there any discussion? So I don't hear any discussion. So we'll take a, a vote to approve this motion, and that will be by roll call. Okay. Bob. Yes. Joe. Yes. Robbie. Yes. Joan. Yes. Uh, Jen. Yes. Shelly. Yes. Uh, Stephanie. Yes. And Dory. Yes. Uh, motion carries. Thank you. So moving on, 6.2. Entertain a motion to approve the first reading of the following policy, GBEC, drug-free workplace. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Bob, you had sent me some, uh, a question about the alternative language. Yes. Yeah. So this is a place where um, you all have the choice as to whether or not you want to add this language or not. And so the language reads, you can leave it as it is, or you can add on the end, any employee who violates the terms of this policy may be allowed to participate in a drug abuse assistance or rehabilitation program approved by the board. If such employee fails to satisfactorily participate in and complete such program, the employee shall have appropriate disciplinary sanctions against, taken against him or her up to and including dismissal. Right, so that as it was presented to us, it would not stay in that form. We would either delete all of the alternative language. Right. Or we would put the altern alternative language in and take out the other. Right, right. Right, because the first the paragraph before that talks about the actions and it could be a period right. at the end of it. Alternatively, you don't do that. You carry out what the alternative language says. Well, no. Well, the alternative language is it has to replace something. It's alternative, right. so it's replacing something. Right. So we, you know, do we want to use the language that's in the alternative section in place of the other language that's in there? That it is is a, the other option. Whichever is the strongest. Well, so did I. <laughs> I, and I it, it would be my recommendation that you keep what you already have and not have the alternative language. Um, the I, I find the alternative language, um, I think the language that's already in the policy is pretty strong. Um, it, it really depends on which way you want to go. 
So I think you keeping the alternative language is a little confusing. Well, it wouldn't be in there if you if you had the alternative language, you wouldn't have the other language. So it wouldn't be confusing. Right now, well, that's what I mean. One one or the other should go. Right, and so Andy's recommending that we don't use what's termed the alternative language, and we mm -hmm. keep the policy that's written up to that point that doesn't okay. include it does not include that alternative language section. Okay. Do you need a motion or anything? Well, well, we're going to have to, we're going to have to, this is a first reading. Right. Yeah. So we don't have to move which it is. We just have to know which, right. so when it comes back for the second reading, it doesn't contain both. And I would okay. hope that, you know, that the policy committee and would make a recommendation and would have either submitted it with or without the alternative language however the okay. policy committee wants to be so that it's you know we take care of it that way so i don't know well, as, how other people may feel the about which language committee, i would okay as part of that as part of the policy committee i would certainly uh, go along with andy and take out the alternative yeah i would too that's i agree you know, the second reading for the second reading i would omit that okay okay i would agree so then all those in favor of approving for first reading noting the board's desire for language change if we would uh, take your roll call vote yep uh bob yes uh, uh joe yes uh robbie yes uh joan yes uh, Jen? Yes. Shelly? Hold on. I need, Shelly had to go out and now she's back in. Uh, let me get her. Here I am. You, you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Can. So is it, uh, we're taking a roll call vote. Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Uh, Stephanie? Yes. And Dory? Yes. All right. Thank you, that motion carries. Okay, 6.3, entertain a motion to approve the first reading of the following policy, GBO, family care leave. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded, discussion. So uh, Bob, you had sent me a question about this. I apologize. Um, the 12 month period at the bottom um, shall be the same for all employees and shall be number C. Uh, the 12 month period consistent with the 12 month period identified for the school units administration of the family medical leave act. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll put that word. And I think the blank says you pick one of those and that's what goes into the. Yes, right. and that's what we had talked about at the policy committee was. Seen. Yes, we did talk yeah. about that. Okay. Right. So then. So A and B go and C stays. Yep. Okay, so again, if that if that's okay and you can voice that when we take the roll call vote, then I would ask that we vote. If there's no other uh, comments, we'll vote on this, uh, except for first reading with the uh, change as has been mentioned to select option C. Okay. Right. Are we ready for roll call? Yes. <coughs> Bob? Yes. Joe? Yes. Uh, Robbie? Yes. Uh, Joan? Yes. Jen? Yes. Uh, Stephanie? Yes. Uh, Shelly? Yes. And Dory? Yes. Thank you so much. Motion carries. All right. 6.4, uh, four. entertain a, a motion to approve the first reading the following policy, GCI professional staff development opportunities. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded discussion. Second. Hearing no discussion, we'll take a vote. Okay, uh, Bob? Yes. Joe? Yes. Uh, Robbie? Yes. Joan? Yes. Jen? Yes. Uh, Shelly? Yes. Stephanie? Yes. And Dory? 
You betcha. Okay, thank you. Motion thank carries. You. Thank you. 6.5 to enter to entertain a motion to approve the first reading of the following policy. G or yeah, G C K professional. Hey, Andy, that's me on hold. My laptop's about to die. What's oh okay. So hold. Moved. <laughs> so moved. All right. All right. So, so I have a, a motion and it's been seconded. Yep. To approve first reading G C K. Any okay. comments? Um, I have just a question, um, it, and I guess maybe the answer is it's just pretty standard. In the second paragraph, the last sentence, probationary teachers shall be evaluated at least once in each year of their probationary employment. That seems a little bit low to me, like I would like to see at least twice, but I guess I don't know with how realistic that is. Uh, so are you on, we're on GCK? Oh. Oh, yeah, sorry. I already thought we okay. passed that one. I'm on the next one. Yeah, I was confused. My I'm bad. like, oh, I don't see that here. Okay. I'm jumping ahead. All right. Any other guys? Sorry, I did that earlier. <laughs> Any other discussion on GCK, professional staff assignments and transfers? Hearing none, then we'll take the vote. Bob? Yes. Joe? Yes. Uh, Robbie? Yes. Joan? Yes. Uh, Jen? Yes. Shelly? Yes. Uh, Stephanie? Yes. Dory? Yes. Fantastic. Motion carries. All right, 6.6. .6. Entertain a motion approved for first reading the following policy, GCOA, Supervision and Evaluation of Professional Staff. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion. Okay, so my comment. <laughs> um, probationary <laughs> teachers shall be evaluated at least once in each year. I just worry, I mean, you know um, that sometimes probationary teachers end up being um, long-term employees and maybe if they were watched a little more closely in their first couple of years, they wouldn't have earned that status. So one seems a little bit uh, short to me. But I don't know what's realistic for your administrators. Yeah, so um, so actually, we we as part of our P plan, plan that the board adopted, it's at least twice. This this is okay. the law. The law requires at least once, but our P peg plan is at, at least twice. And and we it's actually more, we do it more than that. Um, we're in probationary teachers classrooms all the time, and actually they get an evaluation, well, a walk through informal from me as well. Um, okay. You know, satisfy the law, but the law says at least once. Okay. All right. So that's the law, but why should we have our policy in conflict with our plan? And and that's it says at least once doesn't say once. So perhaps our policy should say, should match the the plan and say it twice. Yeah, that that's totally fine. Absolutely. I mean, okay. we won't. We don't want to be out of step because somebody's going to come back and say. Oh, I don't care what the plan says. The policy approved by the board says once. Right. Well, and, and the, poli the language in the policy is, is currently at least once. Um, but I, I have no issue changing it to twice. Honestly, if, my, if the administrators had time, I'd want them in to do it six or seven times. Um, but that's not realistic either. Right. So okay. I have no issue making that at least twice. Okay. 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 Anybody have objections to that change? Nope. 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 No. Okay. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving for first reading the supervision evaluation of professional staff with the language change that was mentioned. Bob? Yes. Joe? Yes. Robbie? Yes. Joan? Yes. Jen? Yes. Uh, Shelly? Yes. Stephanie? Yes. And Dory? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Motion carries. Oh, man. I missed, I missed my comment on that one. You let oh, me slip by I on that. I missed your comment on that one, too. So, part of the issue with this is that 
So when when the PPEG law went into effect, it, into and I'll just address it real quick. When the PPEG law went into effect, um, this never got addressed and so this should be as part of this should stay in there because it should have been in there when it originally got addressed so the comments about the language is it's in the next one also yeah so we can just discuss it under the, my comments on the next one since we've already moved on the first one yep okay 6.7 entertain a motion to approve first read in the following policy gcoc Evaluation of administrative staff. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion. So my comments were, and it was in this the previous policy we just talked about, I didn't have my notes right with me, uh, is that there's comments at the bottom that talk about a timeline which is already passed at least two years ago. Yep. I see no value in having something in a policy that is has been overcome by events or has been overcome by a date why otherwise wouldn't we have dates in there on when all schools would be segregated by 1956 or you know mm -hmm. it just makes no sense that if it was extended because people didn't get it done in time and there's a new date in the future i can see it would have importance and significance should be there but yep. to say you will have it done by a date two years ago in, a, in your policy, either you had it done on time or you didn't. And if you didn't, why it's say now. we're late? Yeah. Yeah, I don't disagree with you, Bob. That's and, and the reason that was put in there by main school management was because back when PPEG law went into effect, we should have addressed these policies, but that never happened. That It can come out. It doesn't have to stay. And we can take it out on the other one when we do um, the second reading. Yeah, that sounds more sensible than to leave keep. Otherwise, what? We're gonna keep changing it? Right, well, we don't need to, that's for sure. No, no. Right, and so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm wondering if Maine School Management just pulled up their, their template and pushed it out and they haven't updated theirs in two years. Uh, well, they, this, I mean, this, yeah, I don't know. That's a good question, but it's, yeah. it, you're, you're absolutely correct because the legal reference takes care of it down below. Yeah. All right. So I would, my so suggestion is, is we committee, the policy committee, uh, on board to, uh, take that out. Yeah. Yes, that I am. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's fine. So it's the last two paragraphs. I believe one's only one sentence long, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yep. Which my professors always told me you can't have one sentence paragraphs. Uh, Obviously, you <laughs> what do they know? Don't <laughs> okay. pay really any attention. Start a sentence with because either, and I do that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's because. Yeah. Um, all right. So that <laughs> would that would be a change, and. Because we're going to take it out, even though we approved for first reading the first one, when we come back for second, so we don't have to modify it at second. Perhaps when the second, okay. first, other one comes back for second reading, it's missing that section as well. It, it probably will be. Okay. So any other comments? Hearing none. So all those in favor of the first reading with the elimination of those two paragraphs. Uh, Raise your hand. Bob? Yes. <laughs> Uh, Joe? Yes. Robbie? Yes. Uh, Joan? Yes. Jen? Yes. Uh, Shelly? Yes. Stephanie? Yes. Dory? Yes. All right. So motion carries. Okay, 6.8. Up, Update regarding current school closures. So um, as you all know, and I, I'll let Kathy do quite a bit of talking here. Um, you know, I, I don't need to run off at the trap so much, but uh, the, so currently we are shut down. Um, I have shut us down until April 27th. One of the things that I've done is kept a workshop day in our back pockets. Um, so, so if we happen to be back and be able to open, I will probably take a workshop day um, before the day before we open because 
the reality is our staff's going to need some time back in their classroom uh, to be able to prepare for that. So I, a lot of districts did two workshop days before they went out. I chose to keep one. Kathy and I talked about it at length, and we just felt like if we transition back in, that's going to be huge for our staff. And so I, I just made the decision not to do that um, and hold on to that one uh, because it just I just worry about that. The reality is we're probably going to be out longer than that, according to the commissioner, and, and that's she's pretty committed to that. Um, you know, we don't, it's interesting listening to, I really like the CDC, the main CDC director. I enjoy listening to him talk. He's, he's very, um, very um, down to earth, I think. You know, him talking about what he said yesterday regarding community transmission, um, he said we probably ought to just plan that there is community transmission across the state at this point because of the lack of testing. Um, yeah. And so, you know, while we only have, I can't remember as of today, five cases in Androscoggin County, although they did shut down DHHS in Lewiston today. Um, yeah, they have. Yeah. Um, so, so I, we have five cases in Androscoggin County and I think four in Kennebec County that are tested. But the reality is there are a ton of people out there that have, they're waiting on tests or um, aren't able to get tested. So I, I think the reality is we're looking long term. You know, yesterday the governor came on. Um, we've, been, we've been following social distancing. I've, I've moved everybody that can that their jobs can do remotely. I've moved them home. We've, we've got technology for them. Um, and, you know, today I met with custodial. Um, they're doing six hours. You know, we've, we've got, and our, our food service is on top of it. So people are, are doing what they need to do. It's just, as I said to the staff, you know, we're, we are flying a plane that's in the air that has no engine and we're trying to fix it at this moment in time. Uh -huh. And it's, it is just really difficult. Um, and I, I appreciate the fact, you know, the support from all of you, the support from the community, because we're, we're make, and I'm really candid when I say this, we're making it up as we go along. Um, I, am, I am incredibly lucky to have the administrative team that, that we have here, uh, because, and I, I know I say this, but I, re, I, now, I now know it. I, I usually say, I believe, I know that we have the highest functioning administrative team around um, because the stuff that we've been able to do in such a short amount of time is um, pretty amazing. Uh, I, I will tell you that throughout this process, it's further highlighted for me how we need to look at food service um, in the future, not for next year, but after. Glenn, Glenn and Scott have, have really um, done some amazing things in their staff with food service. Um, we're ticking off some summer work and custodial. So, you know, we haven't missed a beat in some places, but we're really, we're really just uh, operating to some degree by the seat of our pants at this point in time. So I'll, I'll let Kathy talk about what we're doing educationally right at the moment. So, I'll, yeah. Okay, so um, we've kind of taken this as three phases. We are currently in phase one. Um, we are thinking of phase one, for us, we call it kind of fostering a new normalcy and building a community. Um, so as Annie had said, we took our first professional day on that Monday and the four other days were snow days. And during that time, we made a plan for food distribution, um, analog and asynchronous learning for students, a device rollout plan, as well as communication plans for students, staff, and parents. Um, the second week, which is this week, um, we started our enrichment activities. So technically, uh, we rolled out activities for students. Um, it looks different at the different grade levels, um, but everything can be accessed through our website. We had things printed and we were delivering and parents were picking up and so we had a plan. And so the idea was teachers were providing uh, learners enrichment uh, activities that were both low tech and high tech. Um, depending on the grade level, so learners could practice um, skills. Our goal was just skill maintenance. We were doing no new learning. So in terms of grading, the only grades that were actually being accounted for were grades that were already entered before March 13th. So if students had grades that were incomplete, or if they were ones and twos, 
they could uh, resubmit um, their grades or their work to increase their current grades, but they were not getting any new grades because there was no new learning. Um, they, none of these activities required a teacher to be teaching because the instruction had already happened. Um, and so it was just what I call is like a perfect way for catch up week. Um, so it's like Jim Palmer's dream that every kid should be eligible after this week, right? So everyone has a chance to catch up. So they're just giving an opportunity if they had met a standard um, on a previous unit, they had time. Our next part or our third step to this first phase is our teachers are making connections. So starting this week, and we're increasing even more next week, our teachers are being available. They're available 11 to 2 emails through Seesaw through different platforms like Google Classroom. They're also collecting data. So we don't want to just assume which students um, have technology or family support. We're actually connecting with every student and imparting that. So we're pretty much um, charting every student into like four uh, components. We call it platinum, gold, silver, and bronze. And a, a kid will get um, charted into one of those categories depending on what their devices are like, their internet capabilities, and their family support. And based on what category they will have will depend on what their phase two, their new instruction going forward will look like. So we're gonna customize it that way. Um, we're really using this as when I say building a community, we're out there. Our teachers are passing out food. They're making phone calls. We're out there, we're doing tons of meetings. We're making those connections and we're really focusing on the social emotional understanding of our families. We also understand that our staff are also running households of their own. They might be teaching their own students at, in their own homes. So we're trying to make an understanding of what do our staff homes look like and what are their capabilities? And then what are our students' homes like and what are their capabilities? And we're starting to make those plans for phase two. So we had to think about meals, internet, safety, medication, social, emotional routines, um, what staff it's like, what do they have for capabilities for working from home, cleaning our buildings, communications, all kinds of things. As we head into phase two, our hope is that we would start phase two April 6th. Um, and right now, obviously we're looking, that's our like our tentative start date, April 6th to right now, April 27th, knowing that that will probably go to the end of the year. So looking at that, we're gonna again, have those four categories and plan low tech and high tech opportunities for students. We're gonna think about, and, and, and we've been doing some PD for our staff, I launched a PD plan where staff can actually earn credit hours. Um, I made a menu of probably four pages long, things that can um, help them with their self-care and also things that they can um, do specifically to help them with their instruction. So all of these information things, we're helping them with certain platforms, um, making it consistent. We're having grade level teams to talk about what is this gonna look like to support them, to support their students. In addition, we're talking about accommodations and modifications for our students with um, IEPs as well as our English um, as a, a language learners. We are starting to think about um, and we're having some data collection before we make a determination about what is it going to look like for our seniors. Um, knowing that there are certain rites of passages that we want to make sure that they can still have but we need to figure out what does this look like for our seniors if we are truly done for the rest of the year. We've been in a lot of communications with area, other area schools to figure out so that we're all kind of making the same recommendations as we're going forward as a region. Um, we're talking about what grading looks like. So I will say that when we're looking at phase two, what I've said to our staff and our administrative team is that our goal is ultimately to provide activities, to provide feedback, and keep kids, and by giving activities and feedback, we're ultimately keeping kids engaged in school. And that is our ultimate goal. That is our vision on how we're going to help our students and staff get through this. 
Um, there are so many other factors. Obviously, the DOE has gone waivers that we're not doing assessments. Um, we are not um, having to worry about our school, a number of school days or uh, taking attendance, those kind of things. So, but we still have students that are still learning when they're in virtual high school. The learning is still continuing. Uh, we have AP exams. We're still waiting for College Board. By next week, they said they'll have some more guidance. They did open up today some AP classes that College Board is providing, but again, students would have to access that on the internet. So we're still um, figuring out who and how all our students can access that, um, as well as dual enrollment. We have not gotten a lot of um, guidance yet from our colleges about dual enrollment and what exactly that will look like. So we're still making some plans on that. Um, we are, as Andy had said, we also have to think about a re-entry plan, that if we do get to come back, what does this look like for our staff and how do we transition the learning then? What does that, um, how do we have to realign the instruction for this year? And then how do we make up some of those missed events, community meetings, proms, graduation, things like that. For us, our phase three is looking at next year. Um, so when I think about prerequisites, so let's talk high school. If I'm a math student, I need to have some prerequisites in order to go from algebra one to algebra two. Um, world language is another one that um, typically comes up when you're talking about prerequisites. So what does that look like? And, and how does that change our courses for next year? Um, so these are, we have a lot more questions at this point than answers, but we are starting to chisel away. Part of it this week is to connect with our parents and our students and collect data so we can make the best determinations. When we are looking at seniors, for example, we want to see how many of our seniors were ready to graduate at the end of the semester in January. And let's see, okay, so then if you think of a quarter, another quarter, they had three quarters, we had a third quarter almost done by the time we were done in March 13th. So how many were ready to graduate by that time? So we'll have to make some recommendations with that policy about what that will look like for our seniors. And that will come in the next couple of, in the next month or two. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty much our three phases. Um, and, you know, I would say that our, our staff are really doing a, a tremendous job of connecting with each other and embracing this, this new way of learning. Um, they didn't sign up to be online teachers. Um, some of them are not super tech savvy and are uh, having a huge learning curve and they're embracing it. Um, our students have been wonderful. Our parents, we've had not, but really great comments. Um, and so I think we're just gonna continue to take baby steps. Uh, some other districts have jumped in full bore and have had to take some steps back. And we're just feeling that we rather take some, um, some data, take, take some time, make some methodical decisions before we, um, put too much on our families and our teachers. So our, those are kind of our phase and our plan. Um, so we do plan to have new learning. We do plan to have um, meaningful education in our issue four going forward, but we just need to time it right and making sure that everyone has the right and access to what we're providing. Kathy, just a question um, in terms of providing uh, FAPE for the special ed students. I know yeah. that that has been a difficult sticking point with all of this of introducing any new instruction. Um, how, how are we doing that, I guess? Yep, so uh, we have, I, I think we're thinking this in a couple of ways. First, we need to iron out what does it look like? What does the regular instruction look like? So mm -hmm. once we've ironed some of those out, so like I said, we have two tiers. Uh, well, we have four, right? But we're kind of um, bronze and, and gold are like together and silver and, and um, platinum and gold are together, silver and bronze are together. And so one's really a higher tech and one's a really low tech. Once we figure out those two plans and that's how we're gonna do the instruction, we'll be able to modify it for um, our other students. We have gotten a lot of direction, I mean, from our, uh, education commissioner I, I, all over has been just just do instruction and don't worry about FAPE it will come you'll do the best you can we're not looking to um, do a whole lot of changing of IEPs just yet we're going to kind of phase this in we're still having IEP meetings and we're still having those conversations with 
parents. Um, but exactly what those modifications and accommodations look like, some of us don't know because we don't know how kids are going to respond. We've right. tried it with a couple of our students and we know that some things will work and some things we won't. So we kind of have to try it before we can say we're not going to do it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Kathy, uh, I've heard uh, quite a few good things about what the staff is doing and seen a lot of good things that they put on uh, Facebook and social media. Yep. And can I make a suggestion that when we have the community forum, yep. that, uh, maybe we could ask people to send in questions before, okay. maybe yeah. through social media, so we can maybe get answered, so we can find the, the most prevalent ones and answer those up front and maybe, you know, because if one person asks a question, you know, there's 10 people thinking the same thing. Yep. Great idea. I also got some feedback uh, from a parent that uh, even though students in middle school and high school theoretically should be responsible for their own work, um, to better support the students, some of the parents would actually like um, the emails also from teachers to know like if kids have to be logging in to um, Zoom or Google Classroom at different times so that the parents know because uh, lack of structure um, and schedule at home um, and kids aren't necessarily communicating that information to their parents so there's no follow through and the parents get frustrated because the kids just say eh you know I don't have anything so I don't know I do know that you know some of the high school teachers and probably some of the middle school teachers have platforms because I know Jeremy had talked about that before yep. um, of setting up email lists to have everybody included it might be helpful if if that were put to the forefront as well at this time we also then have the ability to Is somebody talking and we're not hearing you. Oh, sorry, sorry. So we also, uh, Norma Jean's on with us right now, but I, it, we have the ability through Infinite Campus to create filters for that kind of stuff as well to be able to push out through email. So we've got platforms right. by which that can happen. So yeah. that's a good suggestion. Yeah. Well, because my high schooler Monday and Tuesday was really on board with, I've got to be up, I've got to be on my computer at this time, I've got to be with class. And then today was the, when I asked why he wasn't on his computer for class time, he said, oh, it's not important, I don't need to be there, it doesn't count. Yeah. So yeah. I like I I like how do I don't know how to facilitate that myself, and I'm a teacher and a parent. So. Um, yeah. I had no idea if he needed to be there or not. I've heard he's got more work, busy work now than he has had all school year. I don't know how much of that is his perception or what's really going on. Um, so I think as a parent, it would be helpful to know really where he is supposed to be and what I'm, I'm supposed to be facilitating. Yep. Yeah, that was the Definitely. same thing I heard as well. Yep. Yeah, so right now there's no new instruction. So what they're getting is they're reinforce what they've already received. And if they were a student who had already mastered it, it probably does seem like just busy work because they've already done it. And it's like, how many times? Well, he, I guess, he, yeah. In English class, he's supposed to be doing a journal six days out of the week. It has to be a page, a page long in his mind about what's going on with this coronavirus and he's like I don't know I'm not going to sit and watch the news and then write a journal six days out of seven so like it's it's things like that that then he's discouraged with it I'm not even going to do it it doesn't count for anything um, I, I can see the teachers are probably wanting him to stay you know keep the skills that he has right so yeah, I, we, I think that that's the communication piece. Yeah, we can certainly address that. So, and it know, would be a great um, thing maybe to have these kids think about how they feel, not just what's on the news, but how do they feel about uh, what's going on? What are their thoughts, their personal thoughts? That would be a good, uh, that would be very interesting to see in a journal. 
Yeah. So we just have to remember right yeah. now that, you know, that's something that we're trying to get them to continue to do, but it's not, and like he says, it's not going to count for a grade because right now we're not introducing new instruction. So, right. you know, it is something to help them try and keep their skills up. Um, similar to what we'd probably hope they would do during the summer because there's a great skill loss during the summer. So it is the fine line about the message that's being sent on why the work is being, quote, assigned, end quote. Um, so that until where there is new instruction starting on the 6th, um, this is just to kind of keep them involved so that they don't fall out of practice. Well, and, and, and I can say, Stephanie, I hear you on that one. You know, I have an almost 14-year-old who, um, one of the reasons I had to stay home yesterday and do dad school was because, you know, I had to, had to create some structure. And, you know, I laid out a schedule yeah. for the day. And, and, you know, 15 minutes, and I love my daughter dearly, she's wicked smart, uh, 15, 20 minutes into our hour-long school block where, you know, we accessed online resources and stuff like that. Like, Dad, I'm done. I've done my whole day. I go, yeah, so that's not going to work for me, nor that is that going to work for you. So uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to come sit with you, and we're going to do this together, and, and I'm going to plan this out. Or... I'm going to be sending you other stuff to do that's not what your teacher sent. And, and that, that ended it, right? It was amazing what, what she found to do at that point. Um, yeah, well, mine has been also having my two college boys home who want to pass the semester. So right. I've got one that scheduled all morning classes. So he's on with his classes, you know, doing his thing all morning. And then my other son scheduled his classes all in the afternoon. So all <laughs> afternoon, he's doing classwork. Um, we've set up the area, the school. I went back to like my old home school days with the boys. So school is back in session. And now it's trying to get the high schooler, you know, like, okay, right. I know you have a schedule. I know you have things you need to do. Um, it, I, it's, it's just trying to get him on board. Absolutely. It's tough. I, I found that um, the threatening of the electronic devices to disappear has been fabulous. Um, you know, specifically the cell phones. And, and, and I hate doing that because right now that's their only connection to their friends. But, you know, like none of them wanted to do dad's phys ed class yesterday. Um, and, uh, and so I had to, I had to basically uh, look at them and go, I will take your phones and your iPad and it will go away. You will do your push-ups, your sit-up, your you know, that kind of stuff. So, they they were looking. Oh for no, we 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 we've got the whole hockey thing set up outside. We've yeah. got the lacrosse going on. They're upset they can't get up to the high school, and I'm like, you can't walk on the fields at this time of day, you know, time of year, anyways. Right. Um, it's so tough. all of that's going. It's the yep. school piece. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> it is tough for sure. So, Andy, so we can move on here fairly soon, but. Are yep. we taking measures to reduce ex daily operating expenses, you know, and since the buildings aren't being occupied so well, much? Yeah, the buildings are occupied right now because we've got custodial and food service in there, but we're only running buses three days a week right now. That's helpful. Um, you know, our buildings were not occupied the length of time that they normally are, so that's helpful. I mean, our, our operating costs are down. Um, but the reality is we're pushing so hard with food service. I mean, you know, handing out 1,900 meals today it, it isn't, isn't necessarily reducing our operating costs, uh, but it's a good thing for the community. So, yes, our expenses are down. Um, we're trying to do everything we can um, to make sure that happens because if we're going to be down, we might as well save some money. But it's, it, we still are pr running pretty full tilt to some degree in our buildings because custodial and food service are working. Right. I was just hoping that, you know, that we have automated systems in that we can be controlling some of those expenses that we can control, heat and electricity, yep. uh, by yeah, modifying the hours things. that that stuff runs. Yep. You know, which well, you figure at year, night, well, you know, you figure at night, our buildings aren't occupied at night right now. So, so the setbacks are on earlier, the lights are shutting off earlier. I mean, all those things will add up. 
in buildings of this size for sure. Yeah. All right, the problem so I will tell you though, you know, fuel wise, when you think about fuel, you know, we, we, um, we, we put fuel out, right? We sign contracts to buy fuel. So we still have to buy the same amount of fuel, but it will help us as we move into next year. Right. Yeah. Do you get a benefit though, because of the lower price? As on the far, fuel? I, I guess I don't know what you mean, Joan. Well, I'm thinking of myself. When I sign a contract for fuel, I always put in that uh, little kicker that if the price goes down, so does my price. We don't get Otherwise, that as a as a, no. corpor a corporation our size. No. Okay. Yeah. You need to have I didn't. June. I didn't know if there was some benefit along those lines. You know whether they would drop the yeah. price. Our our price of fuel is still lower than the current market price. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So, any other questions about curriculum and how that's going to be handled? I imagine if any decisions are made or any suggestions are being made about any adjustments for graduation certification it probably has to be board approved right well and and we will be bringing all of this to the board anyway as a once the full plan is complete so you'll see it all definitely okay yep all right if there's no other new discussion from the board on this then we'll open it up in case our our public wants to mention anything about this and then we will Carry on. Everything's going good here. My high school is getting to catch up. <laughs> All right, thank you, Sharon. Anybody else sneak in we didn't know about? No, Norma Jean's, oh no, she's here. Okay, so if there's no other discussion on this, then we will move to committee reports. Are there, I doubt any committees have met, but have they? Nope. Uh, no, 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 we have not met. Robbie? Oh, go, ahead. go ahead, Joan. That was me. No, we yeah, have not said met. Enemy. So, Robbie, facilities, yeah. finance? Yeah, the finance committee hasn't met, Bob, but Andy, can you talk about the RFP for the uh, uh, financing? Financing, yes. Yeah, yep. So we. Um, we we put put out to bid the financing for the performance contract. Um, we have sent those bids off to Greg M for review. Uh, my plan is to sign the the best one by the end of the week. I can tell you, uh, we had one that was really good interest rate. It was like two point four percent. So that'll be significantly less than um, than what we had. I mean, at it, it, two point four percent, when you when it, originally when we had amortized the um, the performance contract tracked at three point seven million, we were looking at like two hundred and eighty two thousand dollar payment um, with at two point, and that was at three point three. At two point four nine percent, it's around two hundred and sixty nine thousand, roughly. So we've sent all them off. Uh, they have to have a legal review before before we can enter into it. But we we got a really competitive bid package. So. Too bad they're going to be working now. Right. Uh, well, no, that's, well, so that's the thing. Yeah, that's that's the plan, Bob. If we get this paperwork signed and we can get uh, control of the uh, performance contract, we'll be able to start early. Yep. Uh, like buying windows, uh, the, the water line, and stuff like that. Yeah, no, that's been, that's, we, that's why we're pushing so hard on this, um, because we, we might as well start getting some work done, for sure. Yeah, because we don't know what the requirement might be for use of buildings in the summer. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any other committee reports? All right, board member comments. I uh, want just want to jump in and thank Kathy Martin and the whole team. I can't, it boggles the mind to know what they're coping with. And uh, everything is a new, every day is a new wrinkle. Things they've never been challenged with before. And to meet these challenges, kids, parents, community is, you know, it's amazing. So I want to say thank you and uh, good luck with everything you're doing. 
and stay you. safe and well, please. <laughs> Thank you. That's yeah, my well, comment. Uh, well said, Joan. I, I definitely second that. And I guess I would just like to say, make sure you're keeping safe social distancing. Make sure that don't get sick. Okay? We're trying. <laughs> yeah. And that should go for all of us, too. Yes. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Keep well, all of you. Social distancing. Yeah. Good all luck. these new words now, you know, these new phrases. Never heard that before. I always world. try to keep my social distance. <laughs> Every day I get up, I go, what am I going to learn today? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yes. Any other any other board comments? Keeping, no, I think you guys have done a great job. It's keeping everyone yes. um, on their toes. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and I would uh, kind of close this out as well. As, uh, I appreciate you keeping me uh, informed. Uh, and keeping me involved to some degree. Uh, however I can be of any assistance, please let me know. Uh, and, you know, while I can't speak for the board per se, I can give you my input and what I think the board will support. And that's about what any board chair can go and do. I will also say that while I am um, disappointed for you and that you, uh, we're not selected for the position you interviewed for. I am very uh, pleased for our school unit that it's, it stays intact underneath your leadership. Um, you know, it's a good thing and a bad thing all at once. Um, they don't know what they're missing, but that's all right. I, and I can understand as we talk, it's hard yep. to go and change, yep. change at the helm during something like this. Absolutely. And, right. and you all know I love it here. I've always loved it here. Um, you know, that, that, that attempt was more about proximity to home than anything else. But I, I've got a great team here, and I love working with all of you. Um, it's, it's an absolute pleasure. Oh, and I will Thank mention you. Thank you. And we, I think we all feel the same way toward you. Thank you. And I will mention one other thing um, that there's been – Andy and I have had a brief just discussion about an extension of his contract just so that we can kind of get through some of these things a little more. Um, I think it expires next year or at the end yeah, of this I can't, year. I can't remember. But. Yeah, but just a, a year extension on it. So that's something that will come up. I told him that I didn't think the board would have any problem with that. Uh, mm -hmm. But the personnel committee would look into that and work with Andy on it. On an extension and whatever that might entail and we would discuss that uh, in an appropriate manner thank you okay all right so if there's no other business for the board then i will call the meeting adjourned thank, thank you okay. all thank you good night, good night everyone good night everyone thank you okay thank you Where do I do that? Oh, where do I do that?